So, what we have just witnessed in the last couple of days was a strong message, okay? When you look at what just happened, and I'm not just counting what happened on July 13th. Let's look at what happened late June. And let's look at what happened before then. See, over the past some of you years, you look at the situation with Don Adams, the N-word, by other celebrities that are not of uh, that kind of thing. Let's think about the fact that you had people within the community, term codes, coming to the defense of that. So what message does that send? It sends a message of you're not willing to advocate for yourself. It sends a message of you're not challenging the injustice. It sends a message of, it's okay to bully you. See, what this should teach us, what this should teach is that you can go out here in the world with open arms all day with the love that you want to. That does not mean that you're going to get it in return. You have been shown over and over that you will not get it in return. I mean, how many times does the same thing have to keep happening over and over and over and over again? Let's just think about it. What we have witnessed and what we, when we look at the system and when we look at the victims of the system, it is like the victims are saying, please, I just want you to like me. Maybe if I Submit a little harder. You'll like me and accept me. Okay, that didn't work this time. Let me pray to God about it. Maybe if I turn around and blame other people that look like me for the situation, you'll like me. Oh, that didn't work. Okay, let me try again. Maybe if I jump to your defense against those who look like me when I see you bullying them. You'll like me. Maybe if I side with you and your ideologies that work against myself, you'll like me. And then, you keep doing that and then you realize, what? How could you do this? After all I've done to get you to like me, after all the praying, after all the begging, after all the picking. But see, if this doesn't tell you what it's time to do, then you're just gonna get hit harder and harder because that bully's just gonna kick you harder the next time. First they said something, then they pushed you, then they kicked you, then they threw bricks at you, and all you said was, hey, I just wanna be accepted. This is insane. So with what we have just witnessed, with the Voting Rights Act, and with this verdict that we just witnessed, and now since the verdict, there have been interviews, and you've seen the interviews where the attacking and condescending remarks are steady coming in not only from the Zimmerman family, but from some of those attorneys, even particular jurors. Because see, the belief was that, oh, these are mothers, they're gonna be sympathetic. This is what people who were rallying for Trayvon said. I'm like, sympathetic to who? They're gonna be sympathetic to Zimmerman. They are not gonna be sympathetic to Trayvon. All the evidence there in the world showed you 
what time it was. And you hear the young boy screaming for his life. When you realize the fact that the story was changed by something. When you just look at the way Trayvon was laid out on the ground and they show him dead, laying with his eyes and mouth open. When you look at all of that, and then on top of that, the insensitive remarks that were made saying that this was an act of God by the man who was being defended in this case. George Zimmerman made that statement. When you look at all of that, now, if you sit here and talk about you're going to turn around and pray, you might as well You might as well just not do anything. Because what has just went on, they pray, you pray, U-P-R-A-Y, others P-R-E-Y, okay? So if you're not going to be cognizant of the message that this sends, and it's telling you, hey, look, we are not on your side, we are not your friends. You be mindful of the next time you decide to jump with somebody else for their particular agenda to be pushed. Think about that. Because what they'll do, they'll treat you like that little cheap prostitute or side piece. They're going to use you, get what you want, and put you to the side. You're going to sit there and complain and say, wait a minute, I was unjust. But no, what it was, just like that little side piece, you thought at that particular time that they were really going to be with you full swing. No, you were used for them to get their issue off, to get that bill passed. But when it's time for action and things to happen in their favor, you will be thrown under the bus to make that happen when it comes to who it benefits. Look at what has happened. You must observe. Now we can talk about what the civil rights leaders have done. See, here's the thing. They were going against a system, an oppressive system, okay? And when the civil rights stopped, that was the problem in its first place, the fact that civil rights stopped, because guess what? Oppression kept working. Oppression refined itself. They went up, chopped it up, screwed it up, remixed it, added a little things here and there, and made things a little bit more refined, a little bit more covert, while some things were still over. And so, they're going and they're making adjustments to their game. They went and they called an audible in their playbook, but yet and still, those of African descent are still playing the same old plays. You can read what they're doing. They're showing you what they're doing over and over, and you still won't call an audible. You have to call an audible to what's going on. So sitting here and praying and saying, oh, Jesus is going to make it better, it is not going to work. You don't think they use religion as well? They use that and they move with it. So if you're going to do something, don't do anything silly like be emotional and riot. Don't do that. That's not going to make a difference for anything. Study the facts of this case. Study the facts of the Emmett Till case. Study the facts of what happened with Natasha Harlins, Sean Bell, Amadou Diallo, and countless others. But start with those. Look at the history of gentrification. Look at what happened with the Voting Rights Act. Look at everything that just happened. If you look at that, and you turn the other cheek, and you walk away, you have basically told the bully, it is okay to pick on me. So if you're gonna do something, your first thing is to put aside all of these little silly differences that you have amongst one another and unite for a common cause of progression. And it has to be done through 
economics, it has to be done through education, okay, and through protection, okay, and of course, political. If you do not touch on the political, economical, and educational aspects of your community, this will happen again. You believe in God, well then you better move with him and realize that he's all you need. But, when you realize that he's all you need, understand that statement, don't get me wrong. God represents movement. God represents strength. God represents courage. God represents power. God represents confidence. So, if you're going to utilize that, then let's use God, but let's use it in all of those things. But God does not represent sitting there and just letting these things go the way they were. The time now and this time picketing and crying about it and then blaming your own people is not going to help solve the situation. So, with that said, let us learn about history and understand why things are the way they are today because I guarantee you years from now you'll have an understanding depending on what we do today what today's practices are in the future from now in the near future from the time that we are in today our actions of being a part of the solution is going to make us look at history and say wow they went through this, this is what they had to do. Or our lack of action and too much excessive passiveness will say, you know what? They prayed, they picketed, and they were more fucked up than ever. So, Michael Jackson made a statement. Every day, create your history. So, we must start now.